Praise God, church. You're welcome in the house of the Lord. It's a good morning, warm and cool. Are you ready to praise the living God? Yes. I have a reason to praise that. I guess you join with me. Are you ready? Yes. Hallelujah! Amen. It's a privilege for us to stand before you ministering God. And we don't take it for granted. Okay, join your hands as we praise the living God. Hallelujah. <laughs> A shout of praise to the Lord. Woo! Put on some smile, guys. Oh, we've come to praise you. Oh, we've come to love you. Oh, we've come to praise you. Oh, we've come to yeah, we've come to praise you. Oh, we've come to love you. Oh, we've come to praise you. For all the good things we yeah. have done. So I came to praise you. Oh, I came to love you. Oh, I came to praise you. For all the good things we oh. have done. We've come to praise you. Oh, we've come to adore him. Oh, we've come to sing for him. For all the good things we oh. have done. We've come to praise him. Oh, we've come to love him. Oh, we've come to adore him. For all the good things we have done.
ready to praise the living God that has been good unto our lives, that has fed and protected us, that has provided for us school fees, for us breathing in His glory. Hallelujah. Are you ready?
continues forever. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay, prepare your hearts as we go in the presence of God and worship. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise him. We're going to sing one more time. Double, 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 double. Double, double, double. Everything is 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 triple, triple. Everything is triple, triple. Everything is double, double. Everything is double, double. Double, double, double. Double, double, double. Double, double, double. Double, double, double. worship the Lord this morning and tell him God you're worthy and you're so good you're worthy for the fact that you have entered this new year you are worthy for the fact that you are going to conquer explosively this year Amen. you're Amen. worthy because we are alive you're worthy yes, because Lord. we have your breath in us King of glory Amen. you're worthy because we are saved this morning father we lift our hands today and we worship you King of glory and say that you're worthy King of glory for you're worthy King of glory we have your breath in us, O Lord, that's enough, King of Glory, for us to worship you, Lord, to say that you're worthy of our Father, to say that there is none like you, King of Glory, for as we lift our hands to the Lord, to say worthy, King of Glory, to say to you, Lord, to join the four living creatures, Lord, to join the 24 elders, King of Glory, as they bow down, King of Glory, to you, and they say worthy, and they say holy is the King of kings. Holy is the Lord God Almighty, King of glory. Father, we bow before you, King of glory, and say worthy, and say worthy, and say great are you, King of glory. Great, because our fees is paid, King of glory. Great, oh Lord, for we are not orphans, Abba, Father. Great are you, King of glory. Father, we lift our hands and say worthy, worthy are you, Lord. Worthy are you, Lord. Father, this morning he is our worship, Lord. Receive it from our hearts, King of glory. For you say this is the time, Lord. You have chosen for your true worshipers, oh Lord, to worship you in truth and in spirit, oh God. Here we are, but Father, just receive our worship, oh Lord. Receive our worship, King of glory. Receive it all, King of glory. Receive it, receive it in the name of Jesus, oh God. Father, receive our worship. Worship, oh Lord. Receive our worship, King of glory. Receive it, oh Lord. Just receive it, Lord. Receive it, Abba Father. Father, mm. just receive our worship. Just receive it, oh Lord. Receive it, oh Lord. Receive our worship, oh Lord. And you, Lord, you are worthy. Oh, no one can worship you for me. For all the things you've done for me. Oh, no. Everybody say
want to hear everyone lift their voices to the Lord and tell him, worthy, worthy, worthy. The elders cast their crowns. They bow before the Lord. They bow, they bow, they bow. <laughs> they bow, they bow. They bow. They bow before Him and sing holy, worthy, and sing worthy, worthy. <laughs> but I don't want <laughs> Elders bow before the Lord. <laughs> they bow. <laughs> they bow. <laughs> they bow. <laughs> they cast their crowns. <laughs> they cast their crowns. <laughs> they say, Holy, Holy is the Lord. What is it's worthy because you are alive. It's worthy. The day and night, night and day, they incense so rise. Day and night, night and day, they incense so rise.
surrendering our souls before you, Jesus, because it's only and only you that is worthy of our praise. So many times a lot of things have taken up our minds, but we are choosing to say you are worthy of it all. There is nothing that compares to you. Father, we are here before your God, surrendering our lives, saying you are worthy. Worthy is your name, O oh God. We worship you, Jesus. We join the elders and the angels to say you are worthy of it all. Who could give us the salvation? Who, who could save us from our sins other than you, oh God? That is why we say you are worthy. You are worthy because you've been able to take us through situations we thought we couldn't go through. Father, we worship you. We glorify your name. Go ahead and glorify his name. Tell him, God, you're able. You're able. There is no one like you for the things you have done, Jesus. We are grateful, O oh God, for the new year you have given unto us, for the theme that you have given unto us. This is our year of exploits, O oh God. That's why we surrender to you, because we cannot do it on our own. Go ahead and tell him, Lord, I'm nothing without you. There is nothing I can do unless you are with me, O oh God. Father, we surrender to you. Hear the voices of your people. Father, we are here today saying you are worthy, giving it all unto you, Jesus. Because we've tried sometimes in our ways and failed. That is why we put our faith in you. We have a history with you. We have a history with you, Jesus. That is why we have faith and trust in you. Go ahead and tell him, Jesus, I've seen you do it before. That is why I'm entrusting you for explosive conquest. I want to conquer in my life. I want to conquer so many things. That is why I'm saying I'm giving it all unto you. Father, we are grateful. Thank you so much, Jesus. And in this day, oh God, as we come before you, many of us are hurt. Many of us need inner healing. Father, we submit under your authority, oh God. May you heal us, oh God. May you heal our land. May you heal our city. As the young people, we come before you, Jesus, surrendering unto you this whole week, oh God, as we are going to be in your midst this, this whole week, Father. We submit under your authority, O oh God. May you rule over our lives, Jesus. Come and do miracles, signs and wonders in our midst, O oh God. We praise you. We worship you, Jesus. Go ahead and worship God. Worship him with your words. Worship him with your hands. Tell him, God, you are worthy. Thank you so much for the gift of salvation. Thank you so much for all the things you are doing. All the things you are doing amidst our young people. Father, we are grateful. We say thank you, Jesus. We say thank you, Father, for there is something new you're doing in our land. There is something new you're doing in our country. There is something new you're doing in our midst. Father, that is why we have confidence in you. That is why we come before you today, Jesus, with a lot of confidence that is that you're able to do exceedingly and abundantly. Thank you, Jesus, for the gift of life. Thank you for the provision, oh God. Many of us didn't know how we are going to survive this January, but you've carried us through. Thank him for he has carried us through and is still doing wonders in our lives, oh God. Father, we are surrendering our children before you, oh God. Father, as the holidays are almost coming to an end. Many of us parents are worried of how we are going to handle school fees and all those things, oh God. We are choosing to put our trust in you. We are choosing to put our confidence in you because the Bible says our children shall be taught by the Lord. Father, we are believing you, God, for provision amid these tough economic times, oh God. We are believing you for healing. We are believing you for all these things that you've promised unto us that love you, Jesus. Father, we are surrendering before you today. Come and do your will. May your will be done in our midst. Father, we thank you for all the people that are watching us online, oh God. We pray for everyone online, whatever their needs, oh God. May you touch them, oh God. May they see your mercy. May they see your goodness, oh God. Father, we thank you. We thank you so much for the things that you've done and those that you're going to do. We are believing your word that it shall come, it shall come to pass in our midst. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, choir.
Good morning, church. Go ahead and take your seats. Good morning once again. Welcome your neighbor with a high five. Smile unto them. Let them feel loved. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. And for the people watching us online, thank you so much for choosing to be with us. We are so grateful for what the Lord is doing in your lives. And today is our 15th day of prayer and fasting. And if you've not yet joined us, please, you can still join in. It is our 36 days of prayer. And for the people visiting us for the very first time, if you're visiting us for the very first time, please raise up your hand like this. If you're visiting us for the very first time. Thank you so much, sister. Thank you so much for choosing to worship with us this morning. After the service, you go outside to the right. There is a visitor's room where they will welcome you so much. And they'll briefly talk to you about MPC. And if you're from your church, send your regards. And if you don't have a church, please, you can choose, to be, you can choose this to be your church. These are our announcements for the day. Uh, our 36 days of prayer and fasting are still continuing. And if you've not yet joined over any circumstances, please don't hesitate to join in and believe God for the new things that he's doing in our lives. Amen. Our weekly program still runs the same. Um, from Monday to Friday, we have our faith hour that is from noon to 1.45 p.m. in this place. And then we are having evening sessions from Monday to Wednesday from 5 to 7 p.m. in this place as well as on Thursdays, we have our cells in the different locations. Please endeavor to be attached to a cell. And then on Friday, 9 p.m. to 4 a.m., we always have a night of unshackling. This is where we believe God to break every chain that is in our lives. So come be part of this amazing night. Then Titus class registration is ongoing. For those of you that don't know Titus class, this is a class that teaches us about salvation and knowing the principles, the do's, the don'ts, the ethics of salvation. Please sign up and it's going to, the orientation is starting on the 29th of January 2023. Please make it a point, pick the forms from the table outside where the ushers usually are and God will bless you. Then. Uh, TLP, this is the Transformation Leadership Program, a program that teaches leaders, that trains leaders and all people that are intending to join leadership in part of, as part of MPC. Please, it is ongoing. The registration is ongoing. Pick the forms from Aunt Hilda Msango or at the table outside, the registration table. God bless you as you do so. Then, grip. Tell your neighbor, grip. Yeah, that is God revealed in power. It's starting exactly today. And our theme for the year is unleashed. If you want to know what that means, please make it a point to attend. It, it is from the book of Acts 6, 8. And our guest preacher is already in the house. Isn't that amazing? So GRIP is a conference that brings together young people from primary seven and above and up to 35 years, because that is where the age bracket for youth is. So tell all those youth in, the, in your neighborhood where you work, Anyone in your contacts, tell them that they should be in this place. They should expect powerful word, miracles, signs, wonders, worship, dance, 
deliverance, gains, among others. Because we are young people, all this is expected to be part of this fellowship. So tell your neighbor to tell your neighbor's neighbor that grip is happening. Uh, uh, you people are looking like you know one thing what is happening again. You're looking so cold now. Nah? We are. Uh, uh, you don't want it again. We are. Unleashed. Unleashed to do what? Unleashed to do what? Unleashed to do what? To conquer what? To conquer what? To conquer what? I didn't ask how. There are things that must be conquered this year. There are people that must be conquered this year. There are territories that must be captured. There are places that must be reached. And this week, you are getting... They still don't know. <laughs> this week you are getting... This week we are all getting... And she said it seems like she was saying it ends at 35. In the house of the Lord, we are all children. No. Oh. Even me. I'm a baby in my father's own house. And that means me too I'm included. In getting. In getting. In getting. Amen. And especially those of us who are working. Five to seven. Apostle Tony will be here with us. So if, if your job will not allow you to, uh, to join us from morning to four, please, five to seven, come and let us get unleashed together. Some people are feeling like, uh, my mom is feeling like, hey, I'm flowering, maybe this is, not, this is way too much. But I want to tell you something. Some guy called Caleb, at 80, at 80, he decided to go and take his own mountain. So it's never too late for you to capture what is yours. This week, this week is the week for us to get, to do what? Ah, this church today, eh? Papa, I've really tried. But they're still very cold. Eh, I see. One, two, three, grip. Grip. You can do better than that. Grip. And for that reason, all our parents, all our aunties, our singers, our judges, whoever you are, you planted some beans, some maize, you have some matoke, you have some potatoes, whatever it is you have. And even those of you are like me, who dig using the pen, you received some coins and papers. We are still waiting for those contributions. We're still receiving all of them. Please, if you have any form in cash or in kind, just place it uh, with our administrators and God will bless you. No, that is wrong. God has blessed you already. Just come and give and take your blessing. Amen? One, two, three, grip! Thank you so much, Pastor. And... Uh, we have bands of marriage. Um, Mr. Suna Chelts intends to wed Miss Doreen Catherine Nahamia. So if you have any issue that may prohibit those two to be joined in marriage, please submit it now. Do not come on the day of the wedding. The time is now. Then at this moment, let me invite Pastor, Pastor Mukavi, <laughs> to present to us. They were choosing which pastor should we invite. <laughs> oh, so was that clapping for me? Okay. Let's put our hands together for Jesus very well. 
Amen. This year is something else. I was going to say it's going to be something else. And then I remembered it already started and it's already something else. Hallelujah. Uh, God is doing amazing things. He's changing lives. He's blessing people. Uh, there is a very, very, very special wedding that is going to happen. And they have been announcing these people, but you had never seen them. And they are in the house. Huh, I need to be corrected. Is it ASP? ASP, I think, Assistant Superintendent of Police or something like that. You know, these people, you have to be very careful. If you, over, if you miss, say, their title, you can get in trouble over their rank. And uh, they are getting married uh, that next week. Yes. And uh, here in the house, so, hey, where's my choir? Ah, this choir, does it know how to sing these songs? <laughs> let's, let's improvise a quick one. Come and see, and we sing a song as they come. Uh, you guys, you know how to sing, come and see. Yes, they are here. Amen. Who is going to help us play the... Are you playing the guitar or the drums? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Ni mama mujanga bataya kala vanna mu vaje. Time is not good. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, sing now. Come and see. Hey, come on, see now. Come and see. Hey, come on, see what the Lord has done. Come on, see the Lord. Hey, come on, see now. Come on, see. Come on, see now. Come on, see. Come on, see what the Lord has done. Come on, sing now. Come on, sing. Hey, come on, sing now. Come on, sing. Come on, sing what the Lord has done. Come on, sing what the Lord has done. Hey, I'm gonna take you on tonight, I'm gonna take you on tonight. I'm gonna take you on tonight, I'm gonna take you on tonight. Uncle Hallelujah. Amen. Oh my God, I used to lead the choir and sing. <laughs> I'm rusted. But I am being unleashed. In Jesus' name. I think next month I'm going to lead worship. I feel it in my bones. I'm being unleashed. <laughs> And then I also sing a special. Amen. Ah, people are laughing. They don't know. Uh, please don't warn them. Just let them be shocked when the day comes. Uh, I don't know if when you look here, you see anybody who looks like a police officer. Mojambil, Tatu, Mbele, Tembea. Bono me Rudy, we well, unatembea kama civilian bwana. <laughs> Mbono unatembea kama civilian. Okay, moja mbili tatu mbili tembea. Aha. <laughs> Funga mgu. Amen. <laughs> so if you know you have any connection with this man, also work like a soldier. <laughs> Ah, yeah. 
Praise the Lord. Back to one, be one. Praise the Lord. I've known Sharon for how many years? Like, not 30. Maybe 20. Sharon used to be called here. And then one of our girls were praying for. And the reason why I'm so excited is that we are saying, it doesn't matter how long it takes. Jesus will still come through for you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. I just want to share your testimony to encourage somebody out there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So... I can pass over. <laughs> okay, some people fear to... But okay, she's uh, almost about plus or minus 40. And, I'm, and it's good that I say this because some people are just 27. I think for me what excites me, can you imagine? Then you get a handsome guy like this. Amen. Don't. How do you say that in English? Don't get finished energy. <laughs> Don't let your energy be finished in Jesus' name. Our God is a faithful God. And so I'm so glad to introduce them. And uh, we're doing this on Sunday, right? On the 20th. 22nd. My, my, my numbers, eight days are mixed up. On the 22nd on Sunday, we'll be here and we're going to be doing the wedding in Jesus' name. Our God is so good. And I think next Sunday, that's when we'll have the whole testimony why this is so important. You know, like God can actually change the whole culture, the whole clan because of one person who believes in God. Amen. We went to the village and they held there a function. I think they have never had a function like that. They had never had a function like that in their, in their family that somebody gets married and gets wedded. And she said it will happen no matter the matter. And waited upon the Lord painfully and gladly. And the Lord is a faithful God. And uh, so you realize that's why I had to introduce this particular couple. Because our God is a good God. And so we're introducing them so that many years later you can say, Banangi wali yu yu mchala omuru njenyo, yayangilo mwami omuru njenyo. Let's believe God. Amen. Amen. And so good to have you guys. You're looking smart by the way and sharp. In Jesus' name. Now, this one has a very, very, very strange testimony. I think we'll share a little more uh, next Sunday. He was he raised a Muslim. Up to which age? You are raised a Muslim up to which age? Okay, up to 35. Muslim, lots of trouble. He went everywhere you can go until they said, try church. And when they went to church, the God of the church worked. So he went back to the father and said, Father, I respect you. Our things have not worked. I have found what works. Yes. Amen. So this is a, 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 a heavily powerful, you know, like if you go to everywhere. When I say everywhere, I mean everywhere. And the Lord from everywhere, and then the Lord becomes an answer. This is powerful. You know, I mean, he's already affecting the preaching next Sunday in Jesus' name. Because our God is faithful. We are going to see things change in our families and our Lord is going to be glorified. So I want us to point our hands here and I want us to pray for them. And uh, Pastor Mgurus, Aliwa, come and lay hands and pray for these wonderful people. And then we are, all of us are going to pray. The good thing in this church, whatever you cast doesn't hold. If, in fact, whatever you cast becomes a blessing. When you bless, it's multiplied. In Jesus' name. So all of you, point your hands and let's pray for them that the Lord will uh, uh, amaze them and use them uh, to the glory of his name and that this will actually will not just end here. It will go further. The testimony will be told. I can't hear you praying. Raise your voices as you pray. In Jesus' name.
Yes, Lord, in heaven we want to thank you, Lord. We bless your name, O King of glory. You are might and wonderful. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful couple, Lord. Thank you for the grace upon their lives, O King of glory. We are praying that, Lord, the spirit of the living God will move afresh upon their lives, O my Father. We are trusting you, King of glory, even on this 22nd, that God of glory will just confirm your word. And we pray for a special blessing upon them, O King of kings, that, Lord, you will move in a mighty way, King of kings, that, Lord, you will do great wonders in their family, O God, my Father, that, Lord, you will bless them, O God, even when they come out, even when they come in, O King of glory. We, de we declare a blessing upon their lives, O King of kings, and we are praying that God will provide for them, that you will meet them at the point of need, that, Lord, you will make a way where there seems to be no way, that, King of glory, miracles and signs, O Lord, will follow them, the Lord, your word will be confirmed, O King of glory, in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you and we bless you. We give you all the praise. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' name we pray and believe. So at 2 on Sunday next, we are going to have that function and the Lord is going to be glorified. God bless you. Have a wonderful time in the Lord. Ebeneza, yes, Abajewala, Ebenezeri, Abatuala, Wala, Ebeneza, Abajewala, Ebeneza, Abatuala, Wala, Ebeneza, yes, Atujewala, Ebenezeri, Atutuala, Wala, Ebeneza, Atujewala, Thank you so much, choir. And at this moment, we are going to give in the house of the Lord. So prepare your tithes and offerings. And today, like never before, we are going to have a dance. So put on your dancing shoes as we give before the Lord. Hallelujah. Grip Oye. Grip Oye. And what? Grip Oye. Let's have the dancing crow of Massacre Pentecostal Church.
mu kuwa dalu kufa mu buto yumbi papa si abo kuziza i will sing every day cause you are my jehovah kanku sing say cause you are my jehovah From China, this true child, you know. On fire, firewood. Me never retire, I'm a child of good. Say I'll never rise up, you will lie to you. Now watch my come back. On fire, firewood. Me never retire, I'm a child of good. Say I'll never rise up, you will lie to you. Now watch my come back. As a tiger, while I come on, I've pull him down. We suck him and I've come. As a tiger, they're thinking you're tiny when you sit down. While I pop up when you stand up. Tete bakumone, we no mu foot. We kumona so so, you colossal. They don't see the butterfly in the cocoon. Dynamite smoke, but you're blowing like a boom. Yeah, one tie to the ones who said I will never make it yet. Wait. Ask me for some help so that they can make it yeah. Four, seven times, rise up seven To my action in line with how I said it Combination of future, me, past and present Story ain't done till I fly to heaven Wait Bonfire, firewood Me never retire, my tire good Say I'll never rise up, you a liar you Now watch my comeback, Tiger Woods Tiger Woods Now watch my comeback When I'm low, when I'm low, when I'm low, when I spring back, get out my way. Cause as a tiger, all I need is one mic to know that we're not the same. I'm a Martian, in tune with a higher power. Surely overcoming in the darker hours. Fly butterfly, sting like a bee. Call up God, she. Bring fire down like Elijah. Holy Ghost bar still hyper. I ain't even got a license, but I'm riding this wave. No drivers, I'm just hey, the same boy who brought the face. Our throne is not the place. Nah, despite the things you say, consistent till today. Rise. Bonfire, firewood. Me never retire, my tire good. Say I'll never rise up, you a liar, you. Now watch my comeback, Tiger Wood. Now watch my comeback, Tiger Woods.
Yeah, I'm just warming up. Come during the week, man. It's going to be powerful in this place. Hallelujah, somebody. Amen. Some of us know these things. It's just because for the sake of the elderly, we don't want to make them feel bad. Amen. <laughs> praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I said praise the Lord. All those guys were just small things here like this. And now they have grown. They are big people. We thank God for what God is doing. Amen. And that's why we need to get them unleashed for their great conquest in Jesus' name. What a joy. You know, God connects people. Uh, we were even talking with the apostle. Was that yesterday on phone? Yeah. You know how God just connected our hearts. Um, he's a Mzungu from Africa, brown. I'm an African from Africa, black. But somehow our hearts connected. And... Uh, he is definitely in his own league of things, but somehow God connected us. And um, so what an honor and joy indeed for me to have him. He had a whole lined up program that he just had to painfully close as he listened to God. I think God shouted on him, go to Masaka. And then, uh, so what a joy. He traveled here in the morning and was here by eight before some of you even arrived from Masaka. Uh, man of God, let's stand up just as we welcome him in the house as he comes. He's, he, he's blessing us this week, thoroughly blessing us totally. This week we are going to be blessed in Jesus' name. Man of God, what a joy to have you. Bless us in Jesus' name. Let's lift our hands to Jesus. Heavenly Father, in the name that is above every name, the name of our Lord, Jesus the Christ, the soon coming King, we enthrone you, we magnify you, we exalt you. Thank you, Abba Father, for the privilege to be in your presence. Thank you for this great opportunity you have given us to appear in Zion and to appear in your presence. I ask you, blessed Holy Spirit, open the eyes of our understanding, open our hearts, help us to know the realities of your kingdom, help us to know the power of our explosive conquest, help us, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I pray that your word will come with simplicity, will come with clarity, will come with actualness, will come with understanding. That when all is done, all the glory and the honor will turn unto you. Let your word meet us in every area of our need. We commit today and all through the week. We ask you, Lord, that continue to move by your power and by your grace. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed and believed. Amen. Amen. Kindly take your seat in the wonderful presence of God. I greet all of you in the precious mighty name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. And uh, let's put our hands together for Jesus and bless him for this day. Uh, in the same way, I want to appreciate God for the angel of this house, uh, 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 Bishop Sam and the First Lady. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for this privilege. Let's clap and appreciate God for them. Amen. And the entire pastor team, thank you so much. And all the ministers and the leaders that come to MPC and all those of you that are following online, we bless the name of the Lord. I bring greetings from my dear wife, uh, Pastor Agnes. She loves you and she greets you in Jesus' mighty name. Uh, I can't tell you Happy New Year. We did our Happy New Year in somewhere in December, so we're already in this New Year somewhere. Amen. I didn't travel alone. I traveled with my daughter. You know her. Rita is with us today. Amen. You want to wave? I also traveled with another son of ours. Uh, uh, by the grace of God, he was able to drive me today. Uh, he's also a son in the house. He's in charge of our situated church. 
but also is our bank clerk, uh, Minister Grant Kauma. Where are you? Amen. It's just right there. Thank you so much. Amen. How are you today? How are you today? All is well? You're blessed to be here. Clap for yourself. <laughs> Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. amen. It's going to be good and gooder and goodest and gooder. I encourage you, please, come in. Don't miss any day. God is going to bless us tremendously. In Jesus' mighty name. Somebody say amen. Uh, this morning, in a few minutes, I want to share about something I believe will bless your heart. And, um, you know, as I was praying uh, to wait on the Lord uh, through the theme and uh, what I've been requested to share, I mean, when I was requested to come here, um, I felt to share something very simple, but which I believe will help you to experience the explosive conquest. What ran into my mind as I was praying that a scripture came into my spirit before I get into what I want to get into um, in Revelation chapter 12. Revelation chapter 12 verse 11 is a common scripture. We know Revelation if you have your revelation in your Bible, say amen. If it is out of your Bible, say the blood of Jesus washes me. Amen. But let's begin from verse 7. Revelation chapter 12, verse 7. The Bible says there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not neither was their place found anymore in heaven that is the dragon and his angels prevailed not and there was no place found for them in heaven and verse 9 and the great dragon was cast out and uh, they begin to describe him who is this great dragon? The old serpent called the devil and Satan, which deceives the whole world. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. So the guy didn't come alone. There are guys that came along with him. Verse 10, and I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of, the breath, of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. I love verse 11. And they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto death. Therefore rejoice ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth that he has but a short time and when the dragon saw that he was cast onto the earth he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child and to the woman were given two wings of a great eagle that she might fly unto the wilderness into a place where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the face of the serpent In the story we have just read, we discover that there was war in heaven. 
And we also learn, if there was war in heaven, chances are there is a war on earth. And because there is a war, therefore there is need of conquest because of the war. Bishop Oyedepo said one time that life is not a fanfare, but life is a war fair. When you treat life as a fanfare, you remain a fan star without any significant achievement in your life. When you approach life as a warfare, it will put a demand on you and it will necessitate you to learn the art of war. And without understanding the art of war, you cannot talk about conquest. Conquest is not yet in the view until you have understood that there's a young man with a few liberious boys that we are cast here on earth. And that is the devil and his angels. When that gets into your view, then you begin to live your life with intent and with purpose. And being strategic on how you approach the course of life. Life is a warfare, ladies and gentlemen. But the good thing is, the war in which we engage was already overcome 2,000 years ago. All what it requires us is to be obedient to the voice of the Holy Ghost. God, in his wisdom, put on the flesh of man, and the devil was not aware of what God was doing. And the reason why God did that was he intelligently came on the face of the earth in the form of of a human flesh and body in the name of Jesus such that because God is a spirit and because he's a spirit, spirits are not permitted to operate on earth. The earth is for human beings with flesh. So God had to use higher intelligence that is beyond Lucifer, that is beyond the devil to come camouflaging himself in a form of a flesh so that he may do something for you that you will forever be grateful for. And when Jesus came, the devil was kind of not aware what was exactly had come to do. But what Jesus had actually what had come to do is to deal with this stubborn boy known as the devil and render him powerless and make him a public spectacle and make him lose whatever he had and grab it from him Go back in heaven and live whatever we needed to you and to me that we may live a life of an explosive conquest. So we enter into the battle where we are already assured of victory. We are already in a war where our victory has already been guaranteed 101%. We are not get engaging in a world where we are not certain, where we are not sure, but we are into something. That is why when Paul came many years ago, he said, now I know that we are more than conquerors through Christ Jesus that strengthens us. Somebody say amen. In this battle, you are not trying to win. You are not attempting to win. You are already a winner and your work is to go and conquer your territory. To go and take your territory. I don't know which territory you are believing God for, but I've got good news for you. That you know, by the, before God blesses you, he will send a word. Before God comes for your way, he sends a word. So he has sent a word to you this year, that this is year or your year of explosive conquest. Why? Because it is your year of taking your territory. So ladies and gentlemen, there was a war in heaven. And God has always been on the winning side. God is always the winner. And this 
young boy was cast down. And the Bible goes further to say, and with his demons and his angels, and the Bible says, we overcame him. Not we are going to overcome him. Not we will overcome him. But the Bible says, and we overcame him. It's already a done deal. There's no debate. There's no question about your victory, about your healing, about your prosperity, about your success, about your breakthrough. There's no question about it. It is already a done deal as long as you are in Christ Jesus. It's already a done deal. Just need to be aware of it and enter into that which has already been done for you. Am I communicating? Somebody say amen. amen. So, after having established that, therefore, life is a warfare. I'm excited when they introduced a police officer here. I got excited. The reason I got excited is simply because uh, what I'm going to talk resonates with with that, so to me it was a very nice sign that what I'm teaching is right. This morning and probably in the second service, I want to let you know, understand a few things about warfare if your conquest is to be a reality. And what I want to share with you, I have, call, I have called them, they're about six, they're about seven or eight spiritual intelligence networks. Spiritual intelligence networks. Without clear understanding of intelligence, it does not matter how powerful you are in terms of weapons, you'll never be able to win in any battle. Intelligence in any battle is more important than the weapons of war. Intelligence in any battle is more important than the number of the soldiers on the front line. Intelligence in any war is more important than the amount of money a particular country would possess. That is why we need to give attention to this because without giving attention to this, we might end up becoming victims instead of being victors. Without intelligence, the number of casualties on the battlefront will increase and multiply. And when the number of casualty multiplies and increases, then it becomes a defect to every any um, army that is fighting and a discouragement. I was trying to understand what makes a superpower a superpower. One of the things that makes superpower nations superpowers is their intelligence capability. I was trying to understand why Israel is a small country with a few couple, with a few millions of people surrounded with enemies all around. And yet those that have been to Israel tell you Jerusalem is the most peaceful city on earth. And yet as a juxtaposition, it is surrounded. It's, it's the country that has is being surrounded with the greatest enemies on earth. And yet the city is the most peaceful. What is the secret? The secret is Israel is one of the countries on earth with the greatest and the most powerful intelligent system. And that is what makes it as small as it is to be the most peaceful country on earth. 
regardless the enemies. Why America is known as a superpower of the world? Because of her intelligence capability. Any nation with the highest level of intelligence is the top on the, of the, on the game as far as conquest is concerned. I was privileged by a friend of mine is the representative of NASA in Uganda. Actually, they are two in Africa, but he was appointed to be the leading in Africa. Bishop knows him, Dr. Dale Musisi, a professor at one of the universities at, in, in Texas. I went to visit his office, and he made me to understand so many things about what happens up in the sky. And he told me, actually, there are about only three countries that have shuttles for satellite purposes in the world. The leading is United States of America. The second one is Russia. And the third one is European Union, including a few countries in Europe. And he told me, so I asked him, why do these countries send these shuttle satellites in the sky. First of all, he told me currently there are over between 24 to 30 plus satellites in the sky. And I asked him why. And he gave me a reason. He said one of the reasons why those satellites are in the sky, they help nations in a number of intelligence capabilities. Through satellites, they are able to examine so many things. They are able to identify so many things because the higher you go, the better you are able to see certain things scientifically and militarily. And he told me, uh, these days they use that sophisticated technology for nations to be in charge of so many things. He said satellites are in the sky for a number of reasons. For satellite, I mean for security reasons, for survey reasons, and discovering so many codes as far as life is concerned. And he told me that is why these countries are so powerful. They can be able to tell, actually told me, that they, they, they can so, through their intelligence, they can be able to, to, to scan anything on earth and know what is where and where it is. He told me through their intelligence, they can send a ballistic missile from U.S. to come in this church and only hit Somebody who is not born again. <laughs> That's why if you're not born again, please don't leave this place before you're not born again. <laughs> that is how powerful uh, intelligence is. That's how powerful. And uh, you told me, through this kind of intelligence and um, kind of network, they can conquer any territory. Why? Everything is within their palms using that intelligence. So, as I was contemplating on this, I got reminded of that. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. Thank you. Praise the name of Jesus. Now, Jesus knew that for us 
to be able to enjoy explosive conquest, there is a need for us to be in charge of spiritual intelligence. And without spiritual intelligence, our quest is in question. We cannot be able to go to achieve, to possess, to own whatever is meant for us in the mighty name of Jesus. So I want to talk about this reality. Now, when Jesus saw that this was good, he gave an instruction before he left in order for us to be able to tap into this reality. And what instruction did he give? Luke chapter 24, if you can follow with me, and verse 49. Luke chapter 24 and verse 49. Jesus taught and said, And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. But tell ye into the city of Jerusalem until ye shall be endued with power from on high. Let's get into the book of Isaiah in, before I get into the exegesis of what I want to share with us in the name of Jesus this morning. Isaiah chapter 40, I'll be reading from verse uh, 29. Isaiah chapter 40 from verse 29. The Bible says he gives power to the faint. And to them that have no mighty, he increases strength. Verse 30. Even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. Now, when the Bible talks about the youth, he's talking about strength. But it says, without this intelligence, without this power, the Bible says that even the youth, because youth are expected to be dynamic, to be strong, to be powerful, to be vigorous. But the Bible says, even the youth shall faint, and not only faint, but be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But for this reason, verse 31, but they that wait upon the Lord, what will happen to them? They shall renew their strength. In other words, they shall be empowered spiritually, physically, morally. Number two, they shall mount up. In other words, they shall gain momentum upwards, raising higher. The, again, the Bible says, with the wings as eagles. In other words, they shall catch, they shall have, they shall acquire wings that will cause them to fly instead of just walking. And they shall run. They shall not just walk and not be weary. And they shall walk and not faint. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. So Jesus was around for a couple of years. But on his way, when he was about to depart, he wanted to reveal something very, very significant and told the disciples, don't attempt to approach life without acquiring what necessitates you to be a winner in life. They had attained, attended a Bible college for Jesus Christ for three and a half years. They had all the principles. They had all the knowledge. They had all the word. But there's something they lacked, they needed to capture, and that was the power of intelligence. Ladies and gentlemen, it's not enough to have the principles. It's not enough to have all the knowledge. It's not enough to have all the money. There's something beyond that that you need. And the giver of that is the Holy Spirit. And there is no any way because he knows what you must conquer. He knows the strategy. Actually, uh, in Isaiah chapter, in Isaiah chapter 9, 
and uh, verse 6, the Bible says, this is called, Jesus is called the Prince of Peace, mighty counselor. Now, that word mighty counselor in Hebrew, that word mighty counselor means a mighty strategist as in a war to conquer. So Jesus told the disciples, don't leave, wait, don't be in haste. Why? Because the land you want to conquer has occupants. And these occupants have stayed there for years, for thousands of years. Whatever you want to possess, it has giants. They are giants. The mountains we want to conquer, the mountains that God told the children of Israel to conquer, had inhabitants, had. That's why the Lord told them, keep back, take one step at a time, learn the dynamics and the tricks that they can be able to conquer. So Jesus now is telling us, yes, yes, everything is available, but stay, wait upon the Lord that now, above the knowledge and the principles you have, he may give you the intelligence you need to take full charge and full control. So they had to wait for the Holy Ghost. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is the most important person in our lives. When you miss the Holy Spirit, you have missed all. Go to all the Bible colleges, I love Bible colleges, without the Holy Spirit, you will turn into a Pharisee. A Pharisee is somebody who sees from far. You will turn into a Sadducee. A Sadducee is a sadist. You can have all the principles and remain a religious person. Christians and God's children, we are not like anyone in the world. We are special species. We are special people. We are peculiar people. We are unique people. And what makes us superior and unique is our superior intelligence. Only given by the Holy Spirit. This, listen, this kind of intelligence cannot even be studied at Harvard University. This kind of intelligence cannot even be received from McKell University. This kind of intelligence cannot even be studied from the best university in this world. This kind of intelligence only originates from the Holy Spirit alone who is from above. And it is accessible through born again. It is accessible through Giving your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why if you're not here and you are not born again, you cannot access this intelligence. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. So, that is why Jesus told the disciples, wait. Isaiah tells us, them that wait. Until we master the art of waiting, we cannot access this type of intelligence. Waiting in the kingdom... It's not a sign of weakness. Waiting in the kingdom is not a waste of time. Waiting in the kingdom is the right investment of time. If you want to invest your time very well, learn to be a waiter on the Lord all the days of your life. Men and women that have made impact in the home and the stories of our lives are men that have discovered the mystery. Of waiting. If you are in haste, chances are you knock quick and die early. If you are in haste, chances are you will get an accident and die prematurely. So, Jesus told the disciples, wait upon the Holy Spirit because. It is him that carries the entire intelligence of heaven that mankind requires to conquer, not ordinarily, but explosively. Because the word explosive also comes from the word dunamis. Acts chapter 1 verses 8. Ye shall receive the power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Now, 
that word power in that scripture, Acts chapter 8, it, when in Greek has several meanings, one of them, that word power is the word dynamis, dynamite. That is explosive power. You see, if you have been in a quarry before, I have one of my young brother, he's, uh, he's opening up a quarry, but he was telling me he had to invite uh, people in security, the police, the army, the prisons, to take them where the stone is. And he has to sign special certificate to acquire explosives. They have to, 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 to find about his story and all this for him to be able. But uh, he was telling a, 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 a to explosive. These are smaller dynamites. He needs to get a license to, to have them. And you put a small explosive dynamite in the rock and you switch it on. It will blast the rock the size of this church in a split second. That is the power that operates in a believer. So the word power is the word dunamis, dynamite power. The word power still is the same power as iskas, as ruaha. That, that is explosive. It's not anywhere. That explosive is not in Kabamba. It's not in any factory in the world. Those explosives are limited. But the one I talk about is unlimited. The one I talk about can, can crush this entire world in a split second. That is the power that dwells in you. That is the power that resides not in heaven, but resides inside of you. But you need to learn on how to unleash it. You need to learn on how to release it. You need to learn on how to unleash it. To, 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 to harness it. That it may come out. And because it is that power that enables you to conquer. Without that power, you will only make noise without impact. Without that power, you can claim all the claims. I take you massacre. You will claim until cows return home. When you have never taken even a cup of soil from massacre town. You see, Christians are fond of claiming, claiming, claiming. Some people have claimed until the, the, the hair has turned white. They started claiming when it was entirely black. Now, they are still claiming nothing is happening. And now the hair is becoming white. And they are close to their grave. And they are not come to pass. Why? There is a technology we must master and know how it works. And what makes it to work is understanding how the, this intelligence works. And nobody has that intelligence apart from the Holy Spirit. Apart from the Spirit of God. So what? Why? Because this intelligence network is necessary to us to help us access what has already been for us. You see, it does not matter the type and the functions on the phone. Without network, it is as good as a toy. What gives any phone ability to be a good phone is her ability to pick networks. Her ability to be on network. Without network, it's a normal gadget. It's an ordinary gadget. What makes a phone different from a television set or from a car or from a refrigerator or from a cooker or from a spade or from a hole or from a spoon is the ability of network. Somebody say amen. Are you following? I said are you following? So what are those abilities? Because those abilities are the ones that give you access in the supernatural to bring the supernatural into reality. It is that intelligence that brings things that seem to be far and bring them closer to you. It is that technology that brings a man, even when you are at the age of 40, 41, 
50, 60. That intelligence will bring that man if you waited longer. That's why they have just told us here, our sister here, she's plus, you say plus negative? Plus negative 40, plus negative 50, some, somewhere. Somewhere there. Do you know why the man has come? She has kept the network on. So don't lose your position because of time. Don't lose your place because of what men are saying. Don't lose your place of waiting. Keep where you are waiting because your network will catch where you are waiting. Your network will be on where you are waiting. Keep waiting. When we are growing up in, in ministry, Bishop, there are so many things we struggled and yearned to get. But God could not give them to us at that time. Actually, I want to thank God that the things I asked him in the first 10 years of my salvation, I want to be grateful to him that he never gave them to me. If he gave them to me, I will not be here today. I would have backslidden 150 times ago. But as I asked, I kept waiting. I kept waiting. Little did I know that God was building a lifestyle of waiting within me. Such that I can be a constantly in touch of the spiritual intelligence. Somebody the other day came to me and said, Apostle, why are you still waiting upon the Lord? I said, I discovered a mystery. It is a mystery you discover if you are always to be in a winning situation. If you are ever to be conquering, waiting is a requirement. Waiting is a necessity. You never get anywhere in life and you feel overgrown of waiting. The day you become overgrown of waiting on the Lord is the day you have started, you have started, you have started ascending, you have started uh, creating your personal mochale spiritually. Waiting is the key. This year, we went for vacation. But the week prior to vacation, the Lord asked me to wait upon him at the source. There is an altar, the source of River Nile. And I was spending six days in the presence of God outside, just facing the face of River Nile for six days. Days. Six days. Monday through Saturday. I left Saturday. Sunday went preached a service. On Sunday, on Monday, I and my family, we went to eat cash in Mauritius. Kubai galo, tote kamubuja. Right from waiting on the Lord to conquering, eating cash. Yes, Nagamba Yesu ne wajja nagama tali yo. Biemba de kula sirekara o bikola. Kubanga bikola. Somebody say amen. So briefly in a nutshell, as we conclude, what are these intelligences of the Holy Spirit? Number one, when the Holy Ghost comes upon us, we get this intelligence network that help us to thrive and to conquer. Number one, we get the ability, one of the intelligences is the ability to perceive. The ability to perceive. When the Holy Ghost comes upon us, we receive the intelligence of perception. 
without perception. Now, perception is the work of the Holy Ghost. What is the word to perceive? The word to perceive is the word yada. Why? A D A. The word yada. What does it mean? Is to know by the Spirit. It means to ascertain by the Spirit. It means ascertain by seeing, observation, or recognize, or acknowledge. The word perceive also is the word to discern, to discover. It is also the word to have intelligence by cunning, as David was a cunning prayer. That's the word to perceive. When you read your Bible in the book of a second kings chapter 4 and verse 8 second kings chapter 4 and verse 8 to verse 10 the bible says there was this particular woman now it happened one day that elisha went to shunemi where there was a noble woman and she persuaded him to eat some food so it was oh keep keep verse 8 keep verse 8 on now it happened one day that Elisha went to Shunam. Oh. Elisha, Elisha went to, Sh to Shunam where there was a noble woman. Now, she went where there was a noble woman. Now, other versions say she went where there was a great woman. She was noble, she was great. But something was missing. There is a land she had not conquered. And that is the land of giving birth. She had all the potential. She was noble. She was great. She had the capabilities. She was highly respected. She was highly honored. But she had a problem. And the problem was barrenness. It is Every one of us is noble. Every one of us is great because that is who we are in Christ. But the challenge, there is a form of barrenness. Until this woman acquired the technology, listen to what delivered this woman. And the Bible says she persuaded him to eat some food. That's why sometimes you need to take your pastor and his wife for dinner. Do you know why Jacob received a blessing from his father? He took him at Zebra Hotel for dinner. And the man ate. After eating, what was meant for Esau came to him. May the Lord help you this year to perceive that I am a man of God when I come. And you take me for pork because I love pork. So the woman had an understanding, took money for food. My wife always says, the way to a man is hurt through his tummy. You want to get the best out of your wife? Know what she loves best. Take her. After eating, present your manifesto. For long, you have bother that man to do something for you. Leave him alone. Go to the school of the Holy Ghost to give you intelligence of a particular me meal you will prepare. Now, when you prepare this meal, it must be from the Lord. Now, bring the man to eat the meal. Ah! The, the, the man will vow to give you a palace. There is a meal you will give a man and will promise you an aircraft. Somebody shout hallelujah. And it was so as often as passed by, he would turn in there to eat food. Number eight, seven, nine. And she said now to her husband, look now, I know that this is a holy man of God who passes by us regularly. I know. Apostle Sechans must be a man of God who passes here regularly. Therefore, I perceive. The woman perceived. Another version says, I perceive. This one says, I know. I perceive. 
This is not normal. This is not from Bible college. This is from not school. This is spiritual understanding. Only accessible or given by the Holy Ghost. So when we wait on the Holy Ghost, he will help us to perceive, to know that you can make it in massacre. You can make it wherever you are, regardless of where you are, regardless of your past, regardless of your tribe. You can be able to make it where everybody is complaining about economy. You can rise above the economy of this country when you perceive and know what you're supposed to do and how you're supposed to do it. Praise the name of the Lord. When everybody is going out of business, spiritual intelligence will begin to open windows to you to let you know now invest. Let me give you an example. Many years ago Bishop Joshua already gave us a story. He was in UK many years ago. While he was in UK the spirit of the Lord told him buy a ticket go back now in Uganda. He didn't ask. He bought a ticket and came. While he arrived while on flight, he was contemplating, what am I going to do? But the hospital had perceived and wanted him to perceive to do something. He obeyed. He landed at Entebbe. When he got in Entebbe, the Holy Ghost told him, get a taxi, go to Mitiana. He never even passed his home in old Kampala. A tax director, UK, Entebbe, Entebbe, Mitiana. He arrived in Mitiana, a little bit in the evening. When he got to die in the evening, he didn't know what to do. The Holy Ghost told him, check in a motel. So he went in a motel. That was about six. While he was in the motel, wondering why he's there, he heard some believers drumming. It was a little church that was close to that motel. And the Lord told him, go to that church. You see how important the Holy Spirit is? Now, there's no any way you can get this knowledge from any university. It's not told. There's no course unit as I've been to university. There's no any course unit that will teach you to perceive. So while he got in his motel, he went in this small church. He found them praising and giving thanks to God and praising the Lord. Now, meanwhile, the church had been in 40 days on prayer and fasting, and they were believing God for equipment for the church. And that was the last day. And the Lord told them, I want you to give thanks because I have already answered your prayer. Give thanks. So by the time Bishop Brady entered, they were drumming, praising, giving thanks because God had answered. So the pastor discovered there was a stranger in the church. So in the process of praising, they called him, said, please greet us. While he stood on the platform, the Lord told him, all the money you came with, please give give it to them. That's what they have been waiting for. I have sent you as an answered prayer. So he told them, let me go in the motel and bring all the money. He brought all the money. Every money they needed for equipment was the equivalent. The following day as he was in the motel, the Lord told him, raise up early, go in Kampala. At a, around 8, go and open up account, an account in Commercial Bank, which is now Stan, Stan, Stan Big Bank. Told him, open up an account before 9. And he told him, go in Greenland. Pick out your money before 10. He had, I think, over 100 million shillings. Pick out that money and take it on the account. He, no sooner had he just removed the money and banked it, there was an announcement that from this day until further notes, Greenland Bank has been closed permanently. Until tomorrow, Greenland Bank has never been opened. Whoever had Colorado, whoever had land, whoever had money, they have never recovered. Bishop Prairie recovered his. Why? Perceiving the intelligence of the Holy Ghost. When you acquire this intelligence, where others are failing, you will be rising. 
while others are being downcast, you will be elevated and promoted. While others are crying, you will be laughing. While others are confused, you will be moving forward. While others don't know what to do, you will be able to know what to do. While others are stuck, you will not be stuck. Let me tell you, in such an economy where things are tough and hard, these are moments and times where God wants to prove who those rightfully belong to him. Because the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 1 that arise and shine. What will happen? For thy light has come. And the Bible says, and gross darkness shall come upon the earth. But those with light will shine the brightest. It is the power of spiritual intelligence that will enable you to thrive in a country where everybody is running to Saudi Arabia, who is running to Dubai, is running. You will be making it while they are busy cutting their organs out of their bodies. Let me tell you, church, in the days and the times where we are, the spirit of discernment is very fundamental. Without, without discernment, you can end up losing your inheritance. Without discernment, you can end up losing God's purpose. Many people have lost God's purpose because they lack the spirit of perception, which is the, spirit of, which is the same spirit, the spirit of discernment. Let me tell you, Jesus spoke in, in, in Matthew chapter 24, and he said, one of the forces that is going to govern this generation is the spirit of deception. Deception is going to come in all forms of packages, in all forms of ways, in all forms and in all styles. It's going to come. But the truer to deception is the intelligence of discernment. Many things will come up like themselves as angels of light. Many things will come in as godly. They sound godly. They sound good, but they are not godly. Many things in our days and times, you need to have that technology as an individual. You need to have that ability as an individual to discern. Because without discernment, you will miss your land of territory. You will miss your opportunity. You will look at the intensity of the battle and pull back and turn away from what was meant to build you to make you and to bring you to your place of position. Many people have backed off from opportunities. Many people have left the place of their conquest prematurely. Many people have lost their opportunities. Why? Because sometimes tears may endure for a night. But they are not forever. The Bible says joy will come in the morning. Sometimes when it is about, the day is about to break. Sometimes that is where you get the thickest form of darkness. While God is about to step in, you back off. Why? You lacked discernment. There are people that have left this place prematurely. While God was still working on them, they backed off. The people that have left their prayer meetings prematurely. While God was about to work, you got discouraged, dismayed, and you pulled out. Some people have got out of line. You are busy giving and giving. You felt that the more you gave, the more you gave, the more you gave, the more problem, the more challenge. You said, I think enough is enough with my tithing. I will not tithe anymore. Let me go and praise the name of But that last bit you are about to do is what was going to enter you into your land of conquest. But what happened? Discernment. I heard Dr. Serwada say, you see, he approached over three ladies and all of them looked at the container, not at the content. Because by that time he told us, he had, he was small, short, with large ears. You see, when you are small, any other bit of your part of the body becomes more pronounced. To him, it was ears. So the first lady went to him and said, Ha! Ah, the height, the size, 
the design. He tried another one, another one, until he landed on Mama Frida, who had a discerning spirit. But I was told the first lady that refused him, up to now she's not married. And actually, somebody said, she heard that lady say, that time I saw doctor was short, but the way I see him now, <laughs> the man is tall. <laughs> you see, when you become financially sound, it doesn't matter your height. You might be the shortest in the village, but you'll be called so long. <laughs> I have never had any wealthy man who is short. There is not any wealthy person who is ugly. <laughs> they are calling you ugly because of your wallet. But when your wallet changes location, <laughs> your breakthrough will become more visible than your physical appearance. So many, they lack discernment. I always tell people in our church and wherever I go, if you saw our wedding picture, my wife and I, you would think, you see, the HIV AIDS of these days has become a little bit, uh, has become a little bit, um, uh, I'm looking for a word, a bit, a bit nice, advanced. The HIV is yeah, digital, that's the word. <laughs> But uh, the HIV of 80, 90. Now, this is the real one. <laughs> the one of Billy Bongo Lutaya, if you saw. It's, that one is real AIDS. But this one, these days, he has become a bit dictator. Now, I always tell people, if you saw my wedding picture, you would think I'm in my last stages of HIV AIDS. <laughs> now, the suit I wore, I went on the tailor. They measured it on me. But despite me being measured, the suit won me. I never won the suit. It won me. That is how dangerous the serious lie appeared. So it will take, no woman could see ability in this man unless you have another spirit. In, of intelligence. 23 years later, ladies and gentlemen, everything a man needs in, a woman needs in a man, I have it 101%. You are suggesting to clap? Clap. So I asked my wife, what compelled you? First of all, I was poor, sleeping in a garage, struggling. I could not afford a meal in a day. I could not afford. I used to stay in a garage, which I could not afford to pay rent. But it was, it was at this time I saw my wife and told her, please, will you take me? Will you give me a hand in marriage? And she said, I will. Today, She's the best and the most happiest woman on planet. <laughs> Praise the name of Jesus. Our time is first spent. You read, you read Acts chapter 23 verses 5 to 6. Acts chapter 23 verses 5 to 6. You're also going to read Acts chapter 27 verse 10. Acts chapter 27 verse 10. The Bible says, And Paul perceived that this ship will get into a ship wreckage. If they had risen to Paul, that ship would have never been wasted. The goods would have never been wasted. People would have never gone through a forced fasting. They went on forced fasting on that ship because Paul had perceived and they refused to hearken unto him. If you read Joshua chapter 22 verse 31, Joshua chapter 22 verse 31, and Joshua perceived. If you read First Samuel chapter 12 verse 17, 1 Samuel chapter 12 verse 17, you also read 2 Samuel chapter 19 and verse 6. 2 Samuel chapter 19 and verse 6. Elijah was able, that servant of God was able to perceive that time to change goalposts has come. When you read Luke chapter 20 verse 23. 
Luke chapter 20, verse 23. Luke chapter 20, verse 23. So all those scriptures are going to help you to understand the ability to perceive at your workplace what is God is speaking to you at every given time. In your marriage, when you think things are turning around, what do you discern? Maybe God is trying to call upon you to pray more for your children. Maybe to pray more for your husband. When things are getting tighter and harder at your place of work, what do you discern? What do you think? What do you discern? What do you perceive in the realm of the spirit? When things are getting tough and rough, you know, your bosses before used to be very friendly, but now he has become hard and tough on you. What do you perceive? What is God speaking to you as a child of God? You need to open up your spiritual antennas to understand the intelligence in the realm of the spirit. Your kids are becoming teenagers and they are becoming a little bit unruly. What are you perceiving? What is God telling you now to do? It's no longer, they are no longer toddlers. Now they are adults. They are getting into maturity. They are getting into adults. What do you perceive? What is God speaking to you as far as what you are meant to do to them? You, before you were small, you used to have a small place. Now you have a larger place. You are aiming higher. What do you perceive God telling you as far as your prayer life is concerned? As far as your giving life is concerned? As far as you see, every level of achievement is preserved by a certain level of consecration. Every level of greatness is achieved by a certain level of consecration. You cannot consecrate yourself the same way when you are only to your husband and you and consecrate yourself the same way when kids have come in, when you have teenagers, when you have adults. You need to change posts. You need to change the wave. You need to change the upper. You see, you, you cannot pray the same way you used to pray when you didn't have a car. When you come with a car, a car comes with certain demons the way you pray my sister you used to pray when you are single is not now the way you should pray after Sunday even my brother prayer must change you have entered a new territory new territory requires new intelligence it's not about wedding cake it's not about ring it's not about sing. it's not about cake it's not about buffet food you have entered the new territory. If you are to remain there explosively great and powerful, you must change your technology network. You need to change the networks. The way you pray when you are in secondary school, the way you approach God when you are in secondary school is not the way you approach God when you get at the university. At university, there are higher devils. There are more demons because there is a lot of freedom and liberty. You are on your own. So when you know that you are HS6 candidate, this is the time to get the intelligence you need that will sustain you for the next three years at the university. Why? Because you are changing territories. The demons that fight you when you are in senior four are not the same demons that will fight you when you enter senior five and six. The demons you fight when you are in P7 are not the demons you are going to fight when you are in primary, I mean secondary school. The demons at kindergarten level are different from the demons of primary. Different demons. So all these are lands to conquer, but you need the necessary, the appropriate intelligence, the appropriate discernment. Do you know why many people were Christians but the moment little success came their way, they abandoned everything, they became unruly, pride came all their way. Why? Because they were not strategic enough to know that when you enter into a new territory, you need to upgrade your intelligence. Lift up your hand and say, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, help me, help me to upgrade my intelligence in the spirit for my new territories, for my new conquest, for my new conquered places. Help me, Holy Spirit, help me, Holy Spirit, to increase, to increase, to multiply, to upgrade my networks, my spiritual networks, in the name of Jesus, help me, my master, help me, my Lord, help me, my master, to upgrade, to upgrade, to upgrade, to where, the, to where I want to be, to where I want to go in this year, in the name of Jesus.
My time is just spent. Let me just outline these things. I'll tell them in details when I come. The second is spiritual intelligence you get when you get hooked up that you need to stay in your conquest is the ability to be aware by the Holy Spirit. The ability to be aware by the Spirit. This simply means to know by your spirit beyond your human knowledge. This being aware, being knowledgeable that this is what belongs to me and this is what God expects to me at this time. This, to, to be aware in the realm of the spirit. This is beyond your books. This is beyond your understanding. This awareness is only acquirable and given by the Holy Ghost. The third spiritual intelligence network you need given by the Holy Ghost as you wait upon him is the ability to, the ability of seeing visions and having godly dreams. Joel chapter 2 verses 28. When the Holy Ghost comes upon our young men, they'll be able to dream, see visions, be able to dream dreams and get revelations. Ladies and gentlemen, you need God speaks to his people through visions and dreams. Today, our young men and women are so much preoccupied with the phones, wasting a lot of time on movies and soaps. And that's why we don't have dreamers and visionary younger men. All what they see is having sex. All what they see, when you get into youth meeting, they ask you, how many times should you kiss when you are dating? That's all what they are asking. How many times will you have sex before? How many times do you do? They are talking about it. Why? Because the spirit is not on them. As a younger man, you are saying assignment at that stage is to speak to pick spiritual intelligence that is when you get your dream the bible says in genesis chapter 37 the bible says and joseph dreamt a dream at the age of 17 he dreamt a global dream why he picked what will come in the future it is the dream you pick now that will preserve your future it is the vision you pick now that will preserve your inheritance it is that you pick you don't wait until you are 90 to pick a dream no joseph at 17 David at 15. Killeth Goliath. Killeth a bear and a lion. Understands he's going to be a king and a great leader. And begins to walk in line of his calling. What went with our generation? What went wrong? Because our younger men. But we thank God that before the end of this week. You are going to be unleashed in that which God has ordained and planned for you in Jesus mighty name. Number four, intelligence network you need is the ability for divine revelation. The ability for divine revelation. Without divine revelation, you are ordinary. You are no more. You are a normal believer. You are a far, you see, Pharisee. You are a Sadducee. Sad always. Without the revelation of the Holy Spirit, you'll be an average believer. You'll be a mediocre. You'll be ordinary. You'll be an average Christian. And that is not your portion. It takes revelation of the Holy Ghost for you to ascend the rims and operate where your original must operate in order to stay and in explosive conquest. Another spiritual intelligence you need when the Holy Ghost comes upon you is the ability to know the prompts of the Holy Spirit. The ability to know the prompts of the Holy Spirit. That is what will help you to enter into your land of conquest. Another number is the ability to master the constraints of the Holy Spirit. You get the, the technology or the intelligence of knowing the ability of the constraints of the Holy Spirit. You will know when the Holy Spirit will constrain you to speak. While you are going to talk a big word, he will tell you, stop it. That night you have the best night in your marriage. But if you had said what you are going to say, you would have slept in hell. <laughs> Some Christians sleep in hell while they are in marriage. Why? Because of what you uttered. When the spirit of constraint comes on you, 
He will mold you. He will twist you. He will turn you. You will not no longer do what you want to do. You don't do what you want to do. If it was not by the Holy Ghost, I would not be here. There is no any way. The only man in this country or in the world that can pull me from our church in January is your pastor. I know myself. But when you enter in this spiritual intelligence of constraint, you understand. You are constrained from being at Kingdom Life Tabernacle. Today you are supposed to be in Masaka. You obey, you yield. Am I talking to somebody? Ladies and gentlemen, as I conclude, the last one technology you need to acquire for you to stay in your conquest is the ability, is you acquire the ability to avoid diverting words and conversations. You cannot enter your explosive territory without mastering the ability to understand words that divert men. There were 12 spies that went to spy to conquer the land. The 10 came back with negative report and they never conquered what was meant for them. It was only Joshua and Caleb that conquered the land. You need to have the ability to avoid diverting words because words will always come to divert us from the course of our conquering. Bow your head and let's pray. Heavenly Father, we bless you. We appreciate you. We thank you for this day. Thank you for the opportunity you have given us this day to hear this truth. This is our year of explosive conquest. But you have just handed to us tools that we need to explosively conquer, to be released to the world, to be unleashed to the world. We submit ourselves to the person of the Holy Spirit. We choose to wait upon the Holy Spirit. Help us, Lord, as we wait on you to show us how to conquer. Because whatever we want to conquer, Jesus, you conquered for us 2,000 years ago, but we need to take responsibility. We need to take the responsibility. The earth we want to possess, the Gregon, the old serpent who has cast on this earth and has messed up and disorganized everything. We need the wisdom by the Holy Spirit to possess our possession, to take our territories, to take our promotion, to take our increase, to possess our marriages, to own our healing, to take our deliverance, to take whatever we are believing and trusting God for. Lord, because of lack of this understanding, we have ended up crying like the people of the world cry. Things are tough. Things are hard. Things are impossible. That is not our language. That is not our speech. We are more than conquerors with Christ Jesus. And Lord, because you wanted us to achieve this great achievement, you have made us to sit with Christ in the highest place, in the heavenly place, to be able to observe and to be able to see everything under us, understand, interpret it, and move according to your will and your direction. I pray that you bless the listeners and those that are here today. Bless us. Help us, Holy Spirit, to know you. Just take one minute and pray to the Holy Ghost. Ask him to fill you up with his spiritual intelligence. Just ask him. In Jesus' name we are prayed. Now, before I hand over the microphone, I want to give someone a chance. If you're in this place, whatever I said never applies to a Muslim, to a Catholic, 
to an Anglican, to a Seventh-day Adventist, to a follower of Mama Fina, it only applies to someone that is born again and it is accessible through giving Jesus Christ your heart and your, as your Lord and personal Savior. The Bible says a man believes with his own heart and confesses with his own mouth Jesus Christ as his Lord. Why? Because Jesus is the only way, the truth and life to the Father. No man comes to God except he comes through Jesus. The Bible says, for God so loved the world. And what did he do? He gave his only begotten son. So that whoever believes on him will be saved and not face damnation and destruction of hell. Is there anyone in this place you've been visiting and maybe you backslid for some reason, but you say you want to tap into the spiritual intelligence. You want to give your life to Jesus Christ. I want to give you a chance before I put down the microphone. Even those of you that are following online want to give you a chance. Without the intelligence of the Holy Spirit, your life is at a risk. So if you want to deliver yourself from that risk, let me see your hand. If you want to receive Christ this morning, I want to pray for you. You want to receive Christ. You want to become born again. You want to be saved. You want to tap into that spiritual intelligence. You want to be expressionally above. You want to enter into your explosive conquest. Let me see your hand. I'll pray for you. You want to receive Christ. You want to receive Christ. Amen. Is there someone? Let me see your hand. You want to receive Christ? Where's the hand? Do you want to stand, please? Come forward. This is beautiful. Someone else, you want to receive Christ, come forward. This is not a moment of feeling ashamed. It's a moment of receiving Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. Change your network and get into a better spiritual network. That's the network of the Holy Spirit. Please walk and come forward. Let's come for her as she comes. Someone else, please. Someone else, please. You want to receive Christ today. You want to connect to God. You want to go to know these spiritual realities. They are real in the name of Jesus. Amen. Just come over here. Amen. Wow. Just come close. Can you say these words after me? Say, Heavenly Father. Say after me, Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus Christ. Forgive me of my sins. Those I know and those I don't know. I am sorry, Abba Father. From today, I reconnect back from my original source, which is God, Abba Father. I believe in my heart that Jesus died and rose again. Today, I confess Jesus Christ as my Lord and personal Savior. I decree and declare that I am saved and born again in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the Abba Father, remove my names from the book of the dead and register my name in the Lamb's book of life. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> Let's stretch our hands and pray for them. Father, we thank you for these precious souls that you have brought in your kingdom. Lord, I reconnect them back to that spiritual intelligence which they had lost through Adam. Holy Spirit, they have received you have they have received you i pray that now empower them i break all the shackles all the bondages that have guided mislaid confused their lives every curse every bad luck every oppression of the devil i break it get it off in the name of jesus you powers of evil and powers of darkness devil you are a liar lose this soul lose this life get out of her in the name of jesus get out of her Satan, you're a loser. You're a loser. Loser life. Loser soul. Every covenant you entered into unknowingly in the name of Jesus, I break it in the name of Jesus. Devil loose this soul. I pray that the power of the Holy Spirit will come upon you. Receive the experience of the Holy Spirit now. Dear Holy Spirit, let him have an experience of your presence. Let that power 
be restored in his soul. Receive the power of the Holy Spirit. Father, we thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. Shalom. Wow. Somebody say wow. Hey, is that your best wow? Somebody say wow. Oh my God. They went past Silver saw me this morning. He goes, like, ah, you are here. Because I was supposed to be in Serede this morning. Uh, but the Spirit told me stay. Amen. My God, that was God speaking. No, that was not God speaking. That was God shouting. He has shouted to us. I know there are many of us during this week, I'm sure God is going to help all of us Whoever you are, you check yourself. We may, all of us, need to recommit. Yeah, the level of consecration. Um, where we are is not where we should be. Like almost all of us. May the Lord help us. There are times we've been lazy. There are times we've not, you know, taken the steps we are supposed to take because we wanted to get all the answers. That story about leave London, go, give all the money. What? But that was saving a hundred million. Oh my God. And of course, if you had passed home, most likely Madame would have said other things. But this is where God is taking us. Uh, to listen and hear and separate voices. Father, we want to thank you. As we leave this service, we get into the network, oh God. The Lord, you may continue speaking, rebuking, correcting. My Father, I want to pray that your spirit will influence and orchestrate all our programs. The Master will be able to sit at your feet this week to drink of you. The Master, you shall make us the people you have called us to be as you prepare the young people to be unleashed as to, oh God, that we may get be prepared for explosive conquest. Have your way, Lord. And may you alone receive the glory. And thank you, Lord, for compelling your servant to come. Hard as it was, we know you did it because you loved us. Let me say you did it because you loved me. Thank you for shouting at me this morning. We give you praise in Jesus' name and everybody shout. Amen and amen. Uh, so our first time visitors, as you step out of the church on the right, uh, somebody will talk to you very briefly. God bless you. I um, also want to encourage you to be reminded that um, uh, the young people, the way I've seen them dance, they are not fasting. So we want you to help, you know, facilitate us with the conference. You can never outgive God. And the way God has worked in this church is he puts a figure on your heart. And when you have been obedient, you have the testimonies of what God can do. God bless you so much in Jesus' name.